In this video, we're going to take a look at two different configuration options for networking within VirtualBox. So you should have VirtualBox set up at this point. Hopefully we have a Linux distribution running within VirtualBox. In this case, I have Linux Mint, the XFCE version of it. And you can see that when I open up the web browser, I'm able to browse the internet. And uh, I'm able to get out to the internet, but this particular virtual machine is isolated from the rest of the network. And that's because it's using what's called NAT, N-A-T, Network Address Translation. And it works kind of like what we'll see right here. When we spin up VirtualBox, there's uh, a software firewall that's kind of created by your computer. And if this is the computer right here that is running VirtualBox, a firewall is set up. VirtualBox is on the inside of that firewall. Traffic is allowed to get out to the rest of the network. Traffic is also allowed to get out to the internet, but if this computer over here were to try to access VirtualBox without a request actually coming from that machine, it would be blocked by the firewall. That's the default setting. And let's take a look at that. So here I am on my Windows host operating system. I'm gonna type CMD, and I'm gonna open up Command Prompt. And I'm going to type the IP config command. Now, this will look a little different on your computer depending on your network. So again, I'm on my host machine. And you can see I have a lot of different network interfaces here that are listed on my host machine. The one that's actually correct here is this one. It says IPv4 address, and it says 192.168.1. Dot 148. That's the important number. It also has a subnet mask here of 255.255.255.0. I'll probably produce a video later on that talks about some of the math and how that subnet mask relates to that IP address so that computers can be grouped into networks. But what we need to know is uh, if this has a 192.168.1.148 address, technically any computer from 192.168.1.1 to 1.254 are all considered to be on the same network as this computer. So whatever your IPv4 address is, just take a look at it, and the first three numbers are kind of what you need to look at and remember here. Okay, so here I am inside of my virtual machine now, and this is without having changed any settings, just creating a virtual machine. I'm going to open up the Bash shell here, XFCE terminal. And it looks a lot like that DOS prompt. And I'm going to type the command IF config. It's a little different on Linux. Windows uses IP config. Linux uses IF config. Let's get a readout here. Now, in this case, we have a network interface here that's described as ENP0S3. And it has an IPv4 address of 10.0.2. Dot 15. And so on my host computer, it was 192.168.1. And on this, it's 10.0.2. So technically, my virtual machine is on a different network. It's behind a firewall. It's behind a router. And it's isolated from the other computers that are on my network right now. That router allows this virtual machine to reach out and connect with other computers, but other computers are not allowed to connect directly to this virtual machine. 
And let's demonstrate that real quick because it was 10.0.2.15, right? So I'm going to type CLS in my DOS prompt to clear the screen. We can use the ping command and I'll ping 10.0.2.15. I should have that memorized, but I'm going to double check it real quick here. Yep. Okay, so I'm now going to attempt to, from my host operating system, I'm going to attempt to ping my virtual machine. When I hit enter here, We see there's a delay, there's a request timed out. Even the host computer is not allowed to reach out and connect to that virtual machine with this 10.0.2.15. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to power off my virtual machine. I'm going to click X on the VM and I'm going to power it off. And I'm going to select it and now let's go to settings. And let's find the network here. So if we take a look, you can see the network here is NAT. That's a network address translation. So that's basically saying, let's put a firewall between this virtual machine and the rest of the world. The machine can reach out, but other things are not allowed to reach in. And let's change that. If we click on it, you can see there are several different types of networks we can configure here. We're going to switch it to bridged adapter. And in this case, you may have other options here, depending on how many network cards you have. In this case, I'm going to bridge it to the Ethernet port on the back of my computer that is picking up this 192.168.1.148 address. So this Ethernet card here is the interface, the physical interface that I'm going to bridge this virtual machine to. All right. So once we've changed it to bridge, go ahead and start it up. I'm going to pause the video while this boots. And so here I am. My operating system has rebooted. I'm going to reopen my terminal. We're going to type ifconfig again. And now you can see that this machine has received an IP address of 192.168.1, just like our host operating system, except this one has an IP address of 175. So now it has an IP address and it looks just like any other computer on the network. Well, let's see if we can ping it. So from my host operating system here with my 192.168.1.148 address, I'm going to clear my screen here. I'm going to ping 192.168.1.175. And you can see that we actually get replies to that ping. In other words, this is now reachable by other computers on the network. Now, other computers that are outside of your network, for example, maybe a computer in Canada, if you're in the United States, will not be able to reach this virtual machine because, again, there's a router between your network and the rest of the internet that would have to be configured correctly. But internally, when you have other computers that are set up together on a local network, by changing this adapter setting, From NAT to bridged, we have that outcome of providing the virtual machine with a local area network IP address that is the same or within the same group as the other computers that are physically on your network. All right, I hope that was helpful, and uh, thank you for watching.